Hi everybody, it's Maria here and welcome back to another 3 2 1 Focus Together interview and today I have Lisa Tully with me. Lisa, would you like to introduce yourself? You're very welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Maria. Um, so I am an animal communicator. I come from Wicklow in Ireland and when I work with animals, I can hear their thoughts. I can feel their feelings and I can see what's in their mind's eye. And I've been a professional animal communicator for over five years now, but I really feel it's a career that I've been preparing for all my life to be able to awaken my own intuition so that I can tap into the animals in this way. And I support animals on an emotional level, on a mental and spiritual level, and on a physical level as well. And sometimes if needs be, I share cases with holistic vets as well, homeopathic vets. And I work with all animals. And yeah. the work is Yeah. That is, that's amazing. So do you actually have to be in the physical presence of an animal to work with the animal or are you able to do it remotely? Yeah, I can do it remotely. I can do it in person or using photographs. So therefore I have animal clients as far away as Australia. And the reason I can do that is because I'm using the skill of telepathy. And telepathy is mind, mind to mind communication. And it's not limited by space or distance. So using a photograph, I can connect into the soul of the animal and work with them. Most of the work I do is from photographs because I get more animals done then if I don't have to travel around. And it's just as effective. Wow. So if somebody is looking on and they have an animal that they sense needs some help, What's the process to reach out to you and how long does it take um, to, you know, by the time you have a chance to do a consultation for them? Yeah, so I'm a bit busier um, at the moment because of what's going on. When people are stressed out, their animals get stressed out. So I tend to get quite busy around Christmas time and, and, and times like this. So at the moment, I have a two week waiting list. And if people have an animal, though, that's very sick, I will bump them up the list. I, I kind of almost like triage it and I ask people to wait a bit longer and they will if, if you tell them that there's another animal that really needs the help. So if people want to book on, they, you can do it by my website, animalhealing.ie and all the instructions are there, the type of photographs that I need, the information that I need. But if people also want to chat to me before they book their animals in and have a conversation over the phone, I'm more than happy to do that as well. Okay, that's amazing. I find this very interesting, right? It's something I've noticed myself, but when you touch on the fact that the animals get very stressed when their people get very stressed, right? I have noticed this years ago. I remember a particular girl and her mum died. And so this girl inherited four dogs from her mum. And within three weeks of her mum dying, three of the dogs had died of the exact same ailment that the mum had had. Is that kind of a normal thing? I've noticed that a lot of the time that our animals, like they are almost like they take on to carry what we're not dealing with ourselves. Am I imagining this or is there a link there? Yeah, no, the, you're not imagining it at all. Like we call that mirroring. So the animals are so compassionate and, and have so much empathy and love their guardians that they'll do anything they can to mirror back their illnesses to them, any kind of an illness on any level, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. And when there is a physical problem, like, you know, you have to be careful what the animals will do because my friend's dog, when the father developed throat cancer, I knew that the dog was very close to the dad. And I said to my friend, you want to watch the dog doesn't start lying on your dad's throat. And he said, oh, she's already started doing that. And I was like, that's the dog trying to pull the cancer out of the guardian's body. And then they get sick. And sometimes the guardians will get better. But it's really important to let animals know that no one wants them to get sick and that their guardians know that they have a problem to deal with. So that's a big part of my work. Okay. And so then obviously when you work out what, what's going on for any animal, is it then that 
you have to talk about this mirroring to the guardians or and how open are people to sort of facing up to their their stuff <laughs> yeah that's a really good question i play it by ear to be honest with you when i'm doing a reading it'll come through pretty explicit that it is a mirroring situation and if i don't know the person so well and i don't know how they'll respond to it sometimes i'll just write up the reading because when i do reading i'm with an animal for like an hour and a half to two hours just with the photos communing back and forth and channeling information for them and i type it all up and i send it to the guardian and even if i don't say that there's mirroring going on most like what <laughs> actually what always happens is when the guardian reads the reading they'll come back and go oh my god that's me <laughs> so they've seen it themselves and then i'm like boom okay <laughs> but sometimes if i know the people and i know they're open to it i'll just from the get-go just go there's mirroring going on here yeah yeah and i suppose maybe the thing about it is is because i suppose i've been on my journey for a very long time right uh, and so therefore um i I know myself that everything around me is, is mirroring things back, whether it's the flat tire or it's the dog or, you know, and I don't have any animals at the moment, right? But um, yeah, I suppose maybe for some people it actually takes for their animal to get sick, for them to realize they need to do this work for themselves, you know, do their own work. Oh yeah, people, animals will die you know, before their guardians will take responsibility for their own stuff. It, it's all stages, you know, or some people are the other extreme that pick up on it straight away that there's a problem that the animal's mirroring back to them. So if, for example, if they're usually a calm person and something's going on in their life and they get a bit more heightened than normal, and then the animal starts to get more heightened around them, they'll spot that mirror straight away and they'll start to calm down because the animal has shown them that this heightened state is not helping you. So some people are really quick at it, but then of course you get the extremes where they, they don't get it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny actually talking about it because I remember when my kids were small and I was spinning out, my kids were the ones, well, my youngest in particular, he killed me if he hears this, he used to spin out he was such a mirror for what was going on for me and when i took huge steps to change things in my life he is one of the most laid-back guys now but he was definitely i think little kids are like animals do you know the way yeah. they're in the same way that they automatically know who they can trust like i know animals are the same animals i always notice that right that animals seem to know who they can trust and they know who to keep away from but little kids are the same and i think you know, there's there's huge parallels there between um, the little kids and the way they behave, and animals, you know, spinning out and acting out as well. Are you also finding at the moment that, regardless of what's going on in particular house households, but are animals picking up from the collective consciousness? Because I noticed myself today. It was one of my days. I think it's about five or six days. I had to go get a bit of shopping. And it was almost as soon as I left my gate, I, this panic started coming over me, and I was going, "This is not mine." So are animals picking up the collective as well at the moment? Are you finding that in your work? Yeah, I went around and I just spoke to some of the animals in my local environment. Uh, there's quite a few horses and dogs up here and they're, they're not all mine, but I know them all. And I just started to chat to them, you know, how are you feeling? What do you think about what's going on here? And some of them were saying things like, you know, one of the dogs, for example, he's like, this is your creation for humans. However, we're here to support you. Um, one horse that I spoke to, she, she basically said that this is a rebalancing. Although there's many, many layers to what's going on, hidden layers as well that we might not all know about. But the one that she picked up on, which she said, this is the rebalancing. You have been so in your own arrogance as a human collective that now we're pushing back a little bit that nature's pushing back a little bit and in what form in the form of this virus whether the virus is man-made or not it's still here and it's still something that we need to to work with and the realizations for a lot of people at the moment is how much nature thrives when we don't get in the way so they're fully aware of it you know they absolutely know what's going on yeah it's just amazing and even today as i was talking to 
one of the shop owners in town and, and we, obviously at a distance in the square and just looking at how clear even like we're down the country i'm down in Mullingar, like it's already in the country we're not near a city but just how clear the sky is you know and even how clear the air is it's like it is it's just an amazing blessing and i i personally think i'm calling it corona transformations and corona blessings right because i just i always think there's always some good reason for everything like you say whether it's man-made or not it doesn't matter it's like mother nature is reminding us who the boss is you know yeah. and it's fabulous but it is just so amazing to see the difference now that um you know that we have to go back and stay in our little space and you know we've had a bit of manners put on us really do you know and we can't be out there disrespecting and needlessly busy etc you know yeah very something i want to come back to is what you're talking about um animals supporting us right and what's been flashing into my head i'm, I'm sure you know the film straight away and i can't remember the name of it but you know the film where everybody's soul was an animal walking beside them do you know the film i'm talking about no no <laughs> oh my god okay right no, because I've all, I've often noticed, and again, it's something I wanted to touch base, touch with, base with you about, this whole idea I've seen several times that it's like certain animals seem to be around us, and you know this better, whether I'm right or wrong, it's something I picked up on, that we seem to have certain animals, and they're with us for as long as we need them for a certain part of our journey. It's like they're almost like angels or, you know, whatever way you want to call it, but they're here as like uh, spirit guides, say. To, for a certain amount of time and it's like when we when we get past a certain stage then and the animal feels or the animal spirit seems to feel that we've achieved what it is we need to do that then they pass over again is am i imagining that as well or have you come across that or so are you talking about like our own physical pets that are in the, in their bodies yes so our physical yeah. pets that are in our bodies that sometimes they like it seems to be when we get to certain points that they have done their work with us and when either we've achieved something or we don't need their support anymore or whatever and then they just seem to go to the other side. Am I, am I picking up on something or am, am I imagining it? No, I agree, you know. I do think that every animal comes into our life for a very important reason. And especially that'll highlight the fact of the mirroring as well. You know, because if they're coming in to mirror us, so sometimes if an animal is highly anxious in their nature and traumatized for whatever has happened to them, whether it's this lifetime or a previous lifetime, and they're respond more, well, more like reacting to life rather than responding in a healthy way. And the guardian could be the exact same. And then the guardian does therapy, works on themselves, hopefully, finds a calmer way to be in life, and then the animal may pass over. But I'd also like to add another layer of that is that sometimes when the animals leave their body and pass over, they're still with us and they still work with us, but in a different way. So on the physical level, they've all supported us to as far as they can get. And then they become almost like our heavenly managers, where if we're on our dharma, we're on our purpose, and we're really getting going, they might leave so they can actually be of more assistance to us from the spiritual realms. Which is very interesting because that is what I would feel about both my dad and my granddad. Since they've been on the other side, it's almost like they've been more powerful supporters. So it's lovely to hear that that's the same with our animals. That's fabulous, right? So is there anything else you want to share about what you do? Because I'm really fascinated by what you do. Um, but it's funny because, there's a, you know, a friend of mine mentioned you, as I said, and I was going, oh my God, I know her, I know her, I know her. Not, and, and not really, like knowing you, but not really having had a chat about what you do. And I'm just fascinated. It's like such an amazing gift, Lisa. So is there anything yeah. else you need to share with people? Um, you know, is there anything else you guys just to share about the animals? Yeah, yeah, like I think, you know, when people hear about the work that I do, the way you said it's an amazing gift, I, I genuinely feel that anyone who's intuitive can communicate with animals on a deeper, more conscious level. That you don't have to have, a, you know, super, super skills in any way, because it's just based on a heart to heart connection. And if you meditate, do yoga, 
do kundalini yoga, have a good diet, become more still within yourself. So your thoughts start to calm down and we can all do this. And then what happens is your intuition gets louder and you connect in with the animals. You've more of a chance of being able to hear them, see images that they're sending to you, feel, feel feelings in your heart. Some people see colors or if the animal has an injured shoulder, your shoulder gets sore when you, when you consciously tune into them. So what's going on in the world now, you know, we know that this is a, a paradigm shift moment for humanity. And it's time for us to accept the feminine, the, the, the yin, to allow her to breathe, to allow mother nature to breathe. And all of us can help her do that by just simply going still within ourselves and tapping into our intuition. And if you have an animal friend at home, just sit with them and just make a conscious line from your heart to their heart and imagine their heart expanding with your love. And just say to them, is there anything you want to share with me? And you can think that question to them, or you can actually say it out loud. And just sit there with your eyes closed and see what happens. The animals are just waiting for us to tune into them because they're communicating with one another all the time through their intuition and through telepathy. So by doing that simple process, it's like you're tuning into the radio station that they're already listening to. Wow, that is fabulous and it's and i know i mean i don't i don't think i've ever experienced telepathy with animals but definitely with um particularly melanie my oldest daughter who's your friend and yeah. um, always i used to get this thing when she was a kid i'd go oh my god i have to ring melanie and i'd ring her and she said thanks mom i just sent you a little message to say um i'm out of credit will you call me so we always use telepathy oh look who's coming up here behind you you've got a beautiful black cat is it yeah that's georgie <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, I love it. And black cats are such a sign for me, such a sign of good luck. It's fabulous. Uh, yeah, he's a cosmic being. He's way more powerful than several of us put together. Yeah, and he's big, isn't he? He's like a serious big yeah, cat. Yeah, yeah. So when, so when I do my animal communication workshops, he's one of the teachers on the workshops. Oh, fabulous. So yeah. I didn't know about this. So okay, so he's turned up at the right time for, to, to facilitate the next question. <laughs> So as well as doing the one-to-one -one consultations, you do workshops. So tell us a bit more about what's involved with that. Yeah, so I do, I just teach people basically how to deepen their intuition and connect in with animals. There's more to it than what I, what I explained to you there if you're going to go deep into the work. And it just, it helps people who are really serious about being able to do this. If they true, become true animal advocates. And people use it in a, in a variety of ways. They don't all want to become animal communicators, professional animal communicators. Like the last one I had on it, I had a homeopathic vet. I had a lady who minds dogs for other people. I had a dog groomer. Um, and then I had just genuine animal lovers and people looking for more direction in their life. So I teach the initial stages the, of how to actually do it. And I do that in person when we're, we're able to move around again. But at the moment, I'm also doing them on Zoom and they're working really well because we, we do two photographs. So I'm really excited about that. And then uh, later then we do more in-depth workshops where we go into what do you do when you find a problem with an animal? How do you support them? How do you help them? And how do you heal them? So we go into different healing modalities like flower essences, chakra healings. I get homeopathic vets in to give talks. And yeah, so it goes deep. Yeah, well, it's a really nice program. That sounds absolutely fabulous. And like maybe as well for, you know, even is there an, a lower age group or does everybody have to be over 18 or... No, oh, I I haven't I haven't. Do you mean like for teenagers and kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't gotten that far. It is on the book. It's on the list to do. You know, yeah. I'd love to do it with kids, but at the moment I'm just working with adults for now. Yeah. I do have like seventeen year olds, eighteen year olds signed up for my courses. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't I haven't tailored it for for younger minds which I think would be amazing at it because kids have no resistance. They're yeah, so open-minded and naturally intuitive. Yeah, and still they haven't lost their, their belief in the magic of life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. No, because I'm just thinking for like anybody who maybe was in TY and was, you know, thinking maybe would they like to be a vet or be a veterinary nurse or something, do you know what I mean? For them to help, you know, it would be such a lovely part of their training, etc. Do you know what I mean? And and working out their their direction in life. It's just it's coming into my head. So Yeah, I do get approached by transition year students. And obviously I work from home, so I, I wouldn't be able to manage them for a two week work experience program so what I offer them instead is if I know I'm going down to a stables near where they are where there's loads of horses and I have to do loads of horses in one day I'll bring them with me and they can fabulous. see mm. that sounds absolutely fabulous right yeah. so how about you yourself what are you doing have you any oh look at Georgie behind you there <laughs> <laughs> it's like looking to see what I'm up to <laughs> <laughs> your guardian <laughs> he's got my back <laughs> he does he certainly does um so what are you doing for yourself during the pandemic is there are, have your practices changed um from your normal practice obviously you're indoors but what are you doing to support yourself um well to be honest with you Marie, i'm quite a hermit naturally you know, I live, I live up here in the Wicklow Mountains and so when my friends come to visit, they're just like, you know, when are you coming back to civilization? <laughs> I'm like, never. So, so not much has really changed. <laughs> um, I live where I can go for walks in the countryside. I do my meditation practice. I've still got all my gorgeous organic veg. What, ha what has changed, obviously, is my work levels. I'm working even more now because the work is just getting busier because, as I said, when people are stressed out, the animals are stressed out. But the main thing I think that I would love to share with other people if they're a bit spun out from it. Now, I'm not saying I wasn't spun out from what's happened and I've had to adjust. Things have changed in my life that I've wanted to move forward with and, and I had to grieve certain things I had to let go of because I couldn't do it with all that's going on in the world and it's about allowing yourself go through those emotions and journaling it but i feel when you go through times like this this is the time to be the buddha this is the time to sit on your mat sit on your cushion do your practice because you have time if you're if you're not going to work it's a real opportunity and i find that when i'm meditating at the moment my meditations are like off the Richter scale they're so powerful because there's such a there seems to be such a, a portal opening up on some level and it's about taking up that opportunity and also you can use your 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 nervousness and your anxiety in meditation as your focus so you're sitting there and you're feeling anxiousness in your heart just sit there noticing the anxiousness and then do that for as long as you need and it will start to dissipate you know, so it's about using this time as best you can to improve yourself and also to rest. I have a lot of friends that are grieving, you know, their parents have died or there are a lot of clients, their animals have died and, and, and it's their chance and it's their time to grieve. So maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe that's your self care. Yeah. And I think that it's very important. And what I, I found talking to a lot of people in the last week is that we seem to be oscillating. So one minute you can be really happy and that's great because we all judge that as being good. But then if we feel sad, we start to think that's something bad and we're not comfortable with it. But it, it, And I know, I suppose for me, the first time really dealing with this was the book, The, the Journey, Brandon Bates. You know, to feel the feeling, allow yourself to feel it all and then let it dissolve away and then feel the next feeling. So I think you're yeah. so right. It's like, you know, none of the feelings are bad or wrong. It's just how we're feeling. And yeah, honor ourselves, really. Yeah, yeah. Who, what about, one last question, and Georgie seems to be giving us a bit more space now. He's up there on his throne now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's where we sit and meditate together. <laughs> it's like, oh, and this is where we medita meditated earlier. <laughs> so what if somebody's listening to this, um, who maybe started listening because they love animals, etc., but have never meditated or have never don't have what you and I would call our spiritual practices because I've got my own little things I do. Where would you say to them to start? Is there some little simple thing, you know, now that they've got as far as far in, in watching our little interview, is there some little thing that for them just to get started that you could recommend? Free writing. 
if you've never meditated before and you've never really had much of a practice going on, but you want to be able to get stuff out because sometimes it can be disheartening. Now I'm, I, I'm, I'm a meditation teacher. Okay. So I'm talking about it from this perspective that sometimes when people start to meditate initially and learn meditation, it can be hard to, for the mind, you know, the mind can have more, influence on them than anything else when they first try and sit down so whatever age you are in your life that's how many years your mind has been allowed to have free reign and all of a sudden you're sitting in meditation and you're asking your mind to almost do what you want it to do and it can you can kick back so if you if you don't have that support if you're not used to meditating at all free ride it out get like three fool's caps of pages and just start writing your thoughts down and you'll get the usual stuff that you would expect on the first page. But then when you go to the second page and the third page, real deep stuff will come out that you didn't expect to. And that's one of the practices that I give to my uh, students who are learning animal communication because you're tapping into your subconscious and your super conscious mind. See the pen as a tool that taps into your intuition. So the people who've done a lot of free writing in their life for whatever reason, when they come to my workshops and they tune in with animals for the first time, they're the ones writing reams of information down, whereas other people might be seeing images or writing one word or you know getting a bit so free writing i feel helps you in in many different ways not only with dealing with your anxiety but it opens up something different and you might get some new ideas like with all this free time you know we have a pause what are you going to do when the pause is lifted how are you going to take full advantage of your life then yeah and that it's funny that free writing to me um i remember doing that because i did the artist's way and I actually did the course of the artist's way and I did the morning pages. And that whole idea of forcing yourself to write three or four pages of absolute garble sometimes. But it's how people deal with writer's block and, and you know, creative blocks in their lives. I've forgotten all about it. Thank you, Lisa. You've given me, you know, and this is the thing. By talking, what I'm finding is that um, we're all starting to remember things that we might have dabbled in in the past or found useful in the past. But then sometimes you get out of the habit of doing things as well. So I think that's yeah. a wonderful. That's a wonderful tip for everybody, right? Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? If you feel that your animal friend is struggling in any way, because sometimes um, if animals are anxious and there's all the family around them all the time with all this coronavirus and there's more traffic in the home and there might be more tensions in the home between the humans in the family as well. I just want to mention an amazing flower essence that you might want to get. It's called One of Those Days and my friend Anne Callahan makes them. Her website is indigoessences.com and you could take that for yourself and then for your animal friend you put it on your palm because there's alcohol in it and alcohol is toxic to them so you put it on your palm and you stroke it into their coat and then the alcohol evaporates but the flower essence still has the work in actual fact that's how you could share with them because when you stroke it in to their coat it's going into you as well and and that could be something even in the family home what you could do is you get a bowl of water and drop one of the drops of this essence one of those days into the water and leave it in the communal living area and do that every day refresh it every day and you're supporting everybody through all of this if your home environment is a bit tense for humans and animals that is wonderful and do you know what i love Anne callahan um i met her she was sitting beside me at jenny's Thorpe's um workshop in greystones years ago and then we've been in touch since, and I've actually invited her to do an interview as well. So one of those days, indigoessences.com, I'll put that link under this video as well. And I'll also put the link for your website and for your Facebook page, Lisa. Um, right. So that everybody who wants to get in touch as you can. But I love that tip. That's a fabulous idea of using the essences, et cetera. So look at, thank you so much, Lisa, for being here. It's, that's just been absolutely wonderful. You know. I learned a huge amount there. Thank you. And thank you everybody for being with us. And I look forward to seeing you in another video again soon. Bye. See you, Lisa. Bye. <laughs>